Hey YouTube. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to update the firmware in your Apex radio, be that a mobile or portable. This process is still the same. As always, I suggest that you back up your tuning record. So go ahead and get your radio connected to your laptop, open up the tuner. In this video, I'm going to be using firmware 31, tuner 31, and CPS 31. It's always a good idea to use the same level of everything. Now, obviously, if you're updating from a really old version, you might you know, want to do things in steps from 17 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30. It's up to you. Um, my suggestion is if, you, if you're not using this radio for any professional application, there is really no need to jump up to 31 or anything past 17 unless there is some specific feature that you really, really want. Um, there's no need to update anything unless you got issues or whatever the case is. Anyhow, Go ahead and connect your radio to your laptop, open up Tuner, and let's go ahead and save that tuning record on the radio. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can hit the Moto logo button up there, or you can just hit Read Device from the ribbon. It's up to you. With that, go ahead and save it. Somewhere that you can find it again later. I've already got one in here. We'll just go ahead and replace it. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so now that that is saved, let's go ahead and close that. We'll keep Tuner open. Uh, let your radio reboot here. While it's doing that, go ahead and pop open CPS. Once the radio pops back on, computer recognizes it, everything's good to go. We're going to go up here to device and radio software refresh. We're going to go find that firmware file, whatever it is, and boom, there she is. Once you get that selected and put in there, you're just going to simply click on refresh radio. Now, depending on what you're doing, what kind of a jump it is, all of these other fun things, it's going to read the radio. It's going to check out the code plug. It's going to flash all of the components. And this can take a little bit of time. So if you have a mace in there, it's probably going to update the mace. It's going to update secure hardware, whatever you want to call that. So just keep in mind that this process can take a little bit longer than what you think it should. When it's done, it's going to tell you that, however, comma, long dramatic pause, Look at your radio. Just because CPS says it's done doesn't mean the radio is done doing its stuff. I've noticed with um, Apex 7000s, Apex 7500s, it takes even longer than normal. Now, the radio I'm using in this video is a 6500, so hopefully it won't take too long to get everything up to speed, and we'll call it good from there. So meanwhile, while this is doing that, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video so we don't have to sit here and watch this thing this entire time but it shouldn't take that long. Okay, so we're getting near the end here. You can see that they were flashing the host component. Now we're flashing the mace. That's all going to get updated here pretty quickly. And I'm also going to record the face of the radio. So this way you can see what the screen looks like. Just because CPS here says, in, you know, is going to say it's done doesn't mean it is. Says in. Yeah, it's still early in the morning. So that being said, I'll slap that video on top of this one so you can see what that looks like. We're getting near the end here. So we're going to go ahead and start all of that fun stuff. So everything's good here. The radio is going to reboot. And when it does, it's going to pop back up and you'll see what that screen looks like. So you can see the screen now says maintenance mode, remote device. It's going to reboot a couple of times probably. We're going to update the uh, control head on this as well. This is an Apex 6500, like I said. Um, so I'm not really concerned what happens with this radio. It's one of my experimental radios. So it's got a crazy flash code. I don't use this for anything. It's not public safety use. It's not none of that stuff. So I don't really care about updating the firmware all the way to 31. I always suggest and tell people that they should probably keep it at the lowest level that they're comfortable with, unless there is some specific feature that you are just absolutely dying to have. There's really no need to update your firmware. Now, if you're constantly having issues with your radio, you got an eBay special or something like that, sometimes a firmware refresh will actually clear issues. And if you're trying to do this over and over and it's not really working, maybe bump it up a level and see if that clears the issue for you. I'm going to go ahead and pause this again because sometimes this can take forever as well. Again, depending on how big of a jump you're taking, you know, are you coming from 16 or 10 all the way up to 31 like I am on this radio, it's going to take a hot minute. So patience is always a good virtue to have. All right, we're done with that. Radio is probably going to reboot again. Okay, updating, please wait. 
All right, this one's done. Wants me to reset, but usually it does it by itself, just like it did. I didn't push any buttons. It just turned itself off. It's going to turn itself back on here in a second and continue the update. All right, just like before, it'll say update done. Please reset. Chances are it's going to do it itself, so you don't really have to do anything. Just give it time. Okay, radio is rebooted. Now it's going to update everything else. Secure hardware. That's going to take a minute, depending on what you got going on with that. And then it's probably going to reboot again. Usually how it goes. All right, now that's done. Again, yet another reboot. And it should be done at this point. So we're looking at about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how far of a firmware jump or if you had any extra stuff that needed to get updated, whatever the case is. But that's basically it. Always save your tuning record. And once you're done with that, rewrite that tuning record. So that's what we're going to do now. Go ahead and turn this off so we don't get blasted with a bunch of stuff. All right, let's open up that tuner. We're going to open up our recent file. We'll go down to home mode and hit right device. Programming successful. We can go ahead and close this and it will reboot the radio. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Thanks for watching.